Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about solving inequalities in one variable. This is going to be a four-part process that we're going to go through to figure out when I've got this complex function and it's part of an inequality, so a complex function that's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to zero or whatever it happens to be less than or equal to, how do I solve it? So the first one is, uh, the first step is going to be to find all zeros. and asymptotes. And by asymptotes, I mean restrictions on the domain. Okay, so asymptotes, sometimes we, we think about, I'm finding an asymptote, but really it's a restriction on the domain. So I kind of put that in there so you would understand what I'm talking about, that process. Number two, we're going to divide a number line. using those real numbers from up here. So we're going to divide a number line using those real numbers. Third is test each section of the number line. Uh, to see if it satisfies the inequality. And fourth is answer the question or write solutions in interval notation. So some of this is new, some of this is old. Old stuff is finding the zeros and the asymptotes, and the new stuff would be dividing the number line and testing those intervals to write our answer. Let's look at what we've got here. Let f of x equal x plus 3 times x squared plus 1 times x minus 4 squared. And it wants us to determine the real number values that cause x to be 0, positive, or negative. So let's just start at the very beginning. First step is to find the zeros. So my zeros are uh, x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3. x squared plus 1 equals 0, so x squared is equal to negative 1, so it's plus or minus i, not real. And then x minus 4 squared equals 0, so x minus 4 equals 0, because I, I square root both sides, so x is equal to 4. So really, the two that I'm looking at are my real ones here. Okay, so x equals minus 3 and x equals 4. So I'm going to divide a number line into those sections. Check it out here. Take my number line. And I'm going to divide it into parts using this negative 3 and 4. And basically what I have is I have three sections of answers. So my graph uh, has certain attributes and it's going to be a 0 at negative 3 and a 0 at 4. Well my graph has these sections that give it uh, possible solutions and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test each section. So I need to find a number from the section so I'm going to pick negative 4, I'm going to pick 0, and I'm going to pick 5. Those are numbers that are in this in each of these sections. And what I'm going to do is I want to find the numbers that cause it to be 0. Well I found that. Okay so that's A. B is where it's causing the function to be positive. Well, my sections of my number line give me where everything is, is broken up. And so, so to kind of show you why I'm breaking this up, what I've done is I've graphed this function. Well, check out uh, f of x is equal to x plus 3 times x squared plus 1 times x minus 4 squared. As I zoom out, check out what's going on here. These are my zeros, negative 3, 0, and 4, 0. Well, look at my breakdown. I've got the number line to the left somewhere between negative 3 and 4, and from 4 on. Well, that's, that's my graph here. So I've got this section over here. I've got the section between negative 3 and 4, and then I've got between 4 and infinity. So there's three parts. So this, this part down here, which is all of this, 
the part in between negative 3 and 4, which is up here, and the part from 4 to infinity, which is up here. Well, I'm asking the question, where is it positive? Meaning, where is it above the x-axis? Okay, so obviously, from negative 3 to negative infinity, it's not. From negative 3 to 4, it is positive. From 4 to infinity, it is. And so this is the process of testing those. This is what it would look like if I didn't have a calculator to put on this. And so let's do it by hand first. I'm going to take this value, negative 4, and I'm going to put it back into my original function. So I've got negative 4 plus 3 times negative 4 squared plus 1 and times negative 4 minus 4 squared. So this would be negative 1, this would be 17, and this would be negative 8 squared, which would be 64. Well, I don't necessarily need to know what the number is. I just need to know, is it positive or negative? And so the result here is negative, okay? Which tells me my section from negative 3 all the way down, including all of these negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, is negative. Well, that's true. I can see that from my graph. This middle section here, which is zero, so I'm going to test this section here. Worst arrow of all time. If I test zero, I'm going to put it into my original function. So I've got zero plus three times zero squared plus one times zero minus four squared. Well, this is three. This is one. So 3 times 1 times, and the negative 4 squared would be 16. So this middle section is positive, like it showed me on my graph. So my middle section is positive. My third section is a positive number. So I'm going to have 5 plus 3 times uh, 25, which is 5 squared plus 1. And then 5 minus 4 would be 1 squared. So positive, positive, positive. So this section is positive, which means... My graph shows me that. That section from 4 on is positive. And so my answer to B is, where is it positive? Well, positive intervals would be this. I am positive from negative 3 to 4, but also 4 to infinity. I am not positive from on 4 because that is one of my zeros. My negative intervals going to be this stuff over here, so negative infinity to negative 3, not included there, okay? That's how we do this. So our curve and our function, these breaking points are going to be either asymptotes or zeros. So here we go. That's called a sign chart, okay? The sign chart is the breaking up of the, in, of the number line into those intervals and figuring out what the signs are at different points. All right, so solve the polynomial equality using a sign chart. Well, obviously, in the first one, we had stuff that looked like this. Well, now that I have a quadratic, what do I do with that? Well, I'm going to factor it. So x plus 3. And then this one is uh, negative 8. So I need two things that multiply to 15 and add to negative 8. So I'm going to have an x minus 5 and an x minus 3. And this one is saying, where is it less than 0? Where are all of these things less than 0? And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find my zeros. So, based on this factor, I have minus 3, 5, and 3. So, break up number line. And that's going to give me my intervals. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to have negative 3, and I'm going to have 3, and I'm going to have 5. So in this case, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 sections to test. I'm going to go through each section and see what's a number in there that I can test. So I could put a negative 4 here. Between negative 3 and 3, 0 is always a good one to pick. Uh, between 3 and 5, I'll put 4, and over here I will put 6. Okay. So, as I test these, what I'm looking for is, where are they less than zero? Meaning, where are they negative? So, if I put in negative 4 up here, I'd have negative 4 plus 3 times negative 4 minus 5 times negative 4 minus 3. So, this is a negative 
and a negative and a negative. Three negatives make a negative. So this section is negative. If I put in zero, I'm going to have uh, zero plus three and then zero minus five and then zero minus three. So I'm going to have a positive, a negative, and a negative, which is going to give me a positive. So this section is positive. Moving on to my next section, I'm going to have 4 plus 3 and 4 minus 5 and 4 minus 3. So I'm going to have a positive and a negative and a positive. So this section is going to be negative. Here, 6. So 6 plus 3 times uh, 6 minus 5 times 6 minus 3. So I'm going to have 9, 1, and 3. So positive, positive, positive. So this section is positive. So my answer is what? My answer is where is it less than 0, meaning where is it negative? So answer going to be the intervals where it's negative. So negative infinity all the way up to negative 3. And also, from 3 to 5. Okay, that's my answer. That's where it is less than 0. And I did that by testing my intervals. All righty. Let's do another one. This one's got a little wrinkle to it. Uh, and so, this is a greater than or equal to. And so, as I'm looking at this, I've got to figure out a way to uh, break it up and find its zeros. Well, find zeros. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to go to the graph. And so what I've got here is I have it. And you're thinking to yourself, well, if he has the graph, why doesn't he just look at the graph and see where it's positive and negative? That's a great idea. Let's do that one. So we're going to solve this one graphically. We already solved the last one using a sign chart. So let's solve this one graphically. And we can always check with our sign chart, but let's solve it graphically. And so what I see is I've got zeros at negative 1, 2 thirds, and 4. So my zeros are negative 1, 2 thirds, and 4. And so if I'm trying to figure out where it's greater than or equal to 0, my intervals look like this. If I was going to break up this number line, and we're solving it graphically, but negative 1 and 2 thirds, and 4. Sometimes it helps to be able to see this. If I look at my graph from negative 1 into negative infinity, this part is negative. It's below the line. From negative 1 to 2 thirds, this part is positive. From 2 thirds to 4, this part is negative. And from 4 to infinity, this part is positive. And so which one satisfy the inequality it's greater than or equal to zero? Well, obviously, I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at this one. But the equal to zero is where we're going to have our trick. So here's our answer. Obviously, I know it goes from negative one to two thirds. In the last example, we had open parentheses because it was less than zero. Here, it's equal to, so we are going to have to put brackets around because at negative 1 it's equal to 0. But also our other interval is from 4 to infinity. Okay, And so could I have solved this using the sign chart? Yes, but we did the last one like that so I wanted to show you how to do one graphically. Okay, So that's how you do it. You check out where your zeros are or your asymptotes and break it up. We haven't done one with asymptotes yet so let's try that. Here we go. If we're looking at a graph, so of f of x is x plus 1 over parentheses 3x plus 7 times x minus 8, determine the real number values of x that cause f of x to be a undefined, b 0, c positive, and d negative. So we're going to find zeros and domain restrictions or asymptotes. And by that I should say vertical asymptotes because they are restrictions on the domain. And so things that make it zero. That means numerator's got to be zero. So my zeros are going to be x equals one. My asymptotes are going to be things that allow 
the denominator to be zero, okay? And so I'm gonna set my denominator, three x plus seven equals zero, and x minus eight equals zero. So here we go, if I subtract seven, three x equals minus seven, so divide by three, so x is equal to negative seven thirds, and x is equal to eight. Those are my main points of uh, where I'm breaking up my number line. And so if I actually go ahead and do that, I'm going to break it up, and this will be negative 7 thirds. Here will be 1, and here will be 8. And so I've got to test 1, 2, 3, 4 areas. So I'm going to lay out um, some numbers that are going to help me here. So I'm going to pick negative 3 over here, 0, 2, and 9. Let us test these intervals. Okay, so if I put a negative 3, I've got negative 3 minus 1 on top, and on bottom I've got uh, negative 9, which would be 3 times negative 3, uh, plus 7. And then I've got negative 3 minus 8. So I've got on top a negative 4, and on bottom I've got negative times a negative. And so if I've got a negative over what would end up being a positive, this would end up being a negative interval there. Okay, if I put in zero, let's check it out. I'm going to have on top, I'll have negative one over and then three X plus seven would just be three times zero plus seven. So seven and then zero minus eight would be a negative eight. And so it'd be a negative over a negative, which would be a positive. So that interval is positive. For our next one, I'll put in two. So two minus one over uh, six plus 7, and then uh, 2 minus 8 would be a negative 6, so I'll have a positive on top over positive times negative, and so this interval is going to be negative, because I have a positive divided by a negative. See how this works? So it's just a little algebra working on evaluating some expressions. If I put in 9, I've got 9 minus 1 over 3 times 9 would be 27, plus 7 would be 34, and then 9 minus 8 would be 1, so I've got a positive, 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 so this one would be positive. So, if I'm looking at where they are undefined, this is A. If I'm looking where they're undefined, it's at my asymptotes. So x equals negative 7 thirds and 8. B, where are they going to be 0? Well, that's where the, denom the numerator would be 0. So x equals 1. For C, where is it positive? Well, that would be from negative 7 thirds to 1. And also from 8 to infinity. For D, I'm looking at where is it going to be negative, so that would be from negative infinity to negative 7 thirds, but also from 1 to 8. Okay, so that's the gist. Find the places where you're going to have your zeros and your asymptotes, test the intervals, Find out which parts satisfy either asking you a question which is positive, which is negative, or which is greater than or less than or equal to zero. Okay? That's the basic gist of it, guys. So you got to know a little bit about how to evaluate these domains. But ultimately, you're doing a lot of stuff that you know how to do with that new component of breaking up the number line and testing the intervals. Okay? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.